Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we will be unboxing the iPhone SE 2020 edition. So right here we got the white version and 64 gigabytes. This is a $400 phone of course. It is only $50 extra to go to 128 gigabytes, but I decided to do 64 because this is probably aimed mostly at people on a budget and maybe they can't spend the extra 50. But if you can, I would suggest going for the 128 model. All right, let's get right into this. I love Apple unboxings. They're always really nice. You get the nice pull tab down here. Ooh, and everything just comes off so smoothly. So we'll put that off to the side. So right here you get your user manual and your stickers and your SIM ejector tool. We are going back to the home button on this, which should be interesting. I am going to be switching to this for at least a week to give you guys my thoughts and everything, but I can see this being a very easy recommendation, especially to those who aren't very into technology. Okay. Right here we get the phone itself. It's the iPhone 8 like style. Again, I went for the white version and that looks really nice. It's extremely clean. But we'll put this off to the side with the box real quickly while we show you the rest of everything in here. So 5 watt charger, but it is 18 watt compatible. So if you have one or buy one off Amazon or through Apple, it will work with that. We also have some headphones, which is nice because in the Pixel 3a, it actually doesn't come with any USB type C headphones, but this is of course a lightning headphone. It's nice to see this in a cheaper model. And then we got the USB type A to lightning. So now we'll be putting everything off to the side and getting into the phone itself. Now that is all you will get in the retail version of the iPhone SE, but here, take the plastic off for you guys. And that's nice. As I'm feeling it, obviously it's an aluminum side phone, just like the iPhone 6 to 8 series. This really is quite identical to the 8, but it feels pretty nice. Really small in comparison to what I've been using. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to start it up, get my stuff on it, and then come in for my first impressions after using it for just a little bit. Okay, and we are back now that I set everything up. So I'll give my first impressions. After using this, it's of course really smooth. It's iOS. It doesn't need the specs that Android needs to run very smoothly. And Apple makes some of the best SOCs on the market anyway. This has the 813 Bionic in it. And actually I tested a Geekbench score. So here's that. And from my testing with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it does seem to actually be underclocked in comparison. Now the single score is minimally different from what I had on the 11 Pro Max but the multi-core score was significantly under what I got on the 11 Pro Max. Now, I think Apple's logic here is save some battery life and a lot of people might not be doing multi-core tasks because this main target audience for this product is the average consumer. It's a $400 model that gets you into iOS. And for those people who missed the home button, we have that back and there's Touch ID. And Touch ID is really fast and good and I like it as you can see right there. I do wanna talk about some of the specs really quickly. So this specific model, as you saw before, 64 gigabytes of storage and it has three gigabytes of RAM. The screen is a 4.7 inch design. It's the same design as the iPhone 8 and basically the six to eight all had the same similar 4.7 inch design. The screen resolution is 1334 by 750p. So you're gonna gonna be getting 720p videos on YouTube but it's still pretty crisp and since it is a smaller display it's not as big of an issue it's IP67 rated not 68 again 67 is pretty good for even this model because the pixel 3a at 400 wasn't even IP67 and then we got a 12 megapixel single shooter 
camera and Apple claims it is the best single camera shooter in all their iPhones and even though it is the same hardware as the iPhone 8 it does have the 813 bionic for image processing so I believe it's going to be pretty good I'm excited to test that out for you headphone jack lovers if you're coming from a 6 or 6s it does not have a headphone jack it doesn't have stereo speakers but the speakers are pretty good if you want a quick test here you go Overall, those speakers are really clear and I think it's pretty good. There's no 3D touch, but you do have haptic touch. And finally, my biggest concern that I want to talk about is the battery capacity. So it's an 1821 milliamp hour battery. And when I ran the Geekbench test, it held up pretty well. It did heat up a little bit, but the battery was pretty good. I think over time, that's where we're going to see this battery degrade. It does have wireless charging, which will heat up the battery if you, if you use that a lot. If you use an 18 watt charger and going quickly, again, battery will degrade over time, I'm guessing, like the iPhone 6 to 8 series. But... Apple did offer $50 replacements on those batteries. So you can easily spend that in a couple years if they do the same thing for this model, and then it won't be much of an issue. You'll see very good battery life over time, hopefully. I'm gonna put my main SIM in this, and I'm gonna use it for you guys, and I'm gonna see anything I like or dislike. It's gonna be fun to go to the home button again, and I can't wait to see what we get. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new, and peace.